So investigative genetic genealogy, essentially what it does is it takes somebody's DNA, and that could be from a crime scene, or it could be a John or Jane Doe, and what happens is you do DNA typing on it. So a John or a Jane Doe is essentially somebody who, they don't know their identity, so it's an unidentified individual. What the DNA typing does is it does DNA typing of hundreds of thousands of little bits of your DNA. And then what you can do is you can upload it into genetic genealogy databases. And what it does is it looks for people who share certain amounts of DNA with you. And that's telling you that these people are relatives of that perpetrator or the John or Jane Doe. Now, it doesn't tell you how they're related, it gives you a DNA match. And from the amount of DNA that's shared, you can kind of go, okay, so that could be a second cousin or a third cousin, this sort of thing. So then what happens is you take these genetic matches and you start to build family trees with them. So you might find that some people over here are in a family and another group over here, they're in a family, and you start to build these family trees back. And eventually what you will find is this family over here has a marriage into this family over here. And you know the perpetrator or the John or Jane Doe is descended from that marriage. And then what you can do is you can start to work your way down. And that will give you a set of individuals that you will start to look at. And it depends. So say you know, for example, the perpetrator is a male and around this age. Well, that means you can start to go and have a look at these people and go, well, these are all female. You're not gonna worry about those. Um, these are males, too old, too young. You can also do things like tell something about somebody's predicted hair or eye color, and that can help you narrow down as well, until eventually you might get down to sort of one or two people who look like they could be your perpetrator. And then what you need to do is go and talk to them, essentially, and go and get a DNA sample and see if it matches the crime scene. So this idea of investigative genetic genealogy actually just came from family history and the rise of genetic testing. So it started very early on when people were doing Y chromosome testing. So Y chromosome is a piece of DNA that's passed down just through the male line. So people who are related through the male line, so for example, it might be somebody who shares the same surname as you, and you're going, ooh, are we actually related? Let's see, we'll do Y chromosome testing and see if there's a match. So this was going on very early on. People were studying their surnames, they're building family trees, and one of the things they might want to do is they go, oh, well, we've got this family tree over here, and we've got this one over here, we'd like to see if they're related. So doing Y chromosome testing would allow that to happen. Now we can do much more genetic testing looking at across the entire genome. And you can start to look for people who are related not just through an all male line, you can start to find people who are like first cousins, second cousins, third cousins. So it really grew out of that. It's exactly what we use on DNA family secrets when we're trying to help people with their family mysteries. We take somebody's DNA, we upload it to databases and we look to see who they're related to and then from that we can home in on somebody who might have been their biological father for example. These days with genetic testing across hundreds of thousands of little bits of your DNA it's not just male line you can look at female line, mixed male female lines and you can look at relatives that are, are going back sort of two, three, four, even up to about six generations. Now, investigative genetic genealogy, there are a few issues with it. Now, the first thing is, is that it's not regulated at the moment, and it can be a little bit of a wild west. So one of the things that really needs to come in at the moment is standardized procedures. The other thing is that it's not cheap to do. So building these family trees takes time, and that requires people sort of triage cases and go, right, is it worth doing this one for over another one. And there has to be some kind of mechanism, I think, in terms of deciding which are the best cases to use this on. At the moment, investigative genetic genealogy is not used in this country. It's used loads in places like the United States, Canada, Australia, Sweden, places like this. So I think what's next is, hopefully, in some sort of regulated framework. It'll get used in this country to help people solve cold cases.